Hi and good morning everyone. So I promised to spend some time for a tutorial. So I want to show you today how you do um, bishop sleeves or like in general medieval sleeves without having to do this in Marvelous Designer, but actually just with um, a blender um, on board materials. So first I wanna like join this all together because one of the things um, that I found out lately is that whenever you want to do um, clove simulation, it works best on very big models. So I'm just taking this one and I'm upscaling this to 10. So when we are done, we can just upscale it to S0.1 or 0 0.1 and it will just basically uh, work perfectly. So I'm just gonna much by distance this one and then I'm also doing something else I'm actually gonna use alt j on it and I'm turning this to quads we don't need this uh, for later I just want to make sure that we have here some um, finer um, some finer stuff so um, for my sleeves I'm gonna take this edge loop up until this edge loop make sure that it's going all around there's one two and this one above is a close one. And now normally I would like make this sharp and then uh, select in between, but I found something cool. So you can go here to select and choose um, inner region. So it will select everything that is beside the two edge loops you chose, which is perfect. So I can just duplicate those and separate them with P and selection. All right. Now to actually see what we are doing, I'm deleting all the materials here and giving it a new one, basically just white. And now I can go into edit mode and I'll scale it a bit. Not too much. That's way too much. So I'm gonna do it over here. Uh, let's go with one. That's too much, 0 0.5. Eh, let's try 0 0.3. Uh, 0 0.25. Okay. All right. Um, next thing, I want to make sure that this is kind of like smooth. So I smooth out the vertices a bit. Like that. And this looks fine. We don't care for that one. Um, and so the first thing I want to do is basically, I want to kind of shape it into the form. Let me move myself a tiny bit more to this direction. Um, basically how I want it to look like. So I'm choosing uh, with um, pressed alt one of the edge loops and then I'm turning on here my proportional editing. And depending on how big your circle is, the more it affects. I would actually say, don't touch those edges. Basically just work in between. So I'm going from this one here because I wanna kind of hang lower down. Like this, then making this some more. And I basically just in general form what kind of you want, doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get some nice form for this so we can see some good results. That looks fine. And now what is important before you do uh, anything else, let's actually give here some more as well. Like I said, don't touch the above one. I'm gonna make it like that. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just wanna make a general approach. And now we are choosing this edge loop and this edge loop because those will be um, our pinned group. So it's not moving from this area. So we go here to our, bring myself a tiny bit again. All right. So we go to vertex data and just making a new one and clicking assign here. And everything that we have now here is gonna be assigned to this group, which will be a hard, uh, um, a hard white one. So uh, this looks fine. 
I want to show you first how you can do this, uh, how, uh, how it will look without any subdivision, and then we can play around with it later. So first, I want to have on this thing, um, if we go here to our physics, I want to have here collision, because I want this to interact with this body, so when it's falling down, it's not just going through. And here on this one, now this is the important part, I want the clove one. I'm all normally using silk and then working my way up here. We will start with five. One thing you need to do is go to shape and pin group and search the one that you just created, which is this one for me. I don't want it like super stiff, so I'm gonna go for zero eight. On collisions, I'm always going with, or normally going with five and distance I'm gonna do 0.111. So it will just um, snap to whatever is the lowest number and here as well. And then we can already like do a one first start. If you don't have the animation to appear, simply click here on the plus to general and then move to animation. And if you never were in here, don't worry. It's like not like super hard. I'm just making here two different views so I can see from both sides how it will look. And I'm turning this one in render view. So I have some insight on this. And now basically when you click um, your um, your space key, moving myself a bit again, it would just start the animation in here. And you can see it's not moving at all because basically we don't have enough vertices for this. So we click on the mesh, go to our uh, modifier tab and we are choosing the subdivision modifier. And what's important, we are moving this below the clove. I'm hitting this on two. And let's run this again. Now this is much nicer. And since we don't see much in white, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Like this, yes. All right, and now we can start playing around with this. So one thing that I found out what is um, pretty cool to work with is actually um, the weight um, of, the, um, of the mesh. And you can all do this here in the physics uh, section. So if I go down here, I have actually property weights. So if you want to create some folds that are going in this way, Basically from the one that you have pinned, you can choose here the shrinking group. I'm going here to my group one. And this will actually pull it in. So let me show you. I'm going to have it on a kind of bigger, uh, bigger number. So you can see what it's doing. As you can see, it creates actually some slink between the two, uh, the two um, hard uh, pinned groups that I made. What is also pretty nice to work with is actually the shearing because this is like when you have like waffles and you have here sh small shearing on the uh, on the sleeves. This is what it's basically doing. So if I go here to group and basically do now the shearing, you can see how it's not as hard as the other one, but it creates still some nice shearing on both parts. All right. And now you can start to play around. What I found pretty cool um, working with this is two things. It's one time if you go to field weights, you can adjust the effect, uh, um, the effects that you have on the slip. So if you want to have like something like this, but not like fully f falling into each other, you can actually make the gravity smaller. So it won't fall as much, but it will still create, see, some nice geometry, even not falling fully in. And you can get those awesome, beautiful diamond folds, which are of uh, which are normally how to do. Otherwise, you can also go up here. I know there is a ton of million other ways, but I want to focus for this course on on this one. And you can actually like make it way uh, way heavier which is basically just making it fall way more down as well, as you can see. But now if you don't have something that is called gravity, you can create some pretty cool forms with this. 
like you can see it's falling down and basically whenever you hit the next space it will stop the animation and you can grab any kind of form you want to have and you can create awesome sleeves with that like otherwise this would be pretty hard to uh, to sculpt at least for me because i'm not a good sculptor and just um, play around with it, um, see what you can work with it, and also how different st uh, stuff um, affects. Like if we have basically zero um, zero gravity, but a very heavy um, um, cloth, you can see it creates like those small nice bags, and yet we get like those super nice um, sleeve uh, folds at the top. And stuff like this, you can, if you don't want to have this, you can always uh, sculpt it out later or like smooth it out. So you can see even in here, it looks super nice and pretty. Now you can basically just play around with this. Something like this. Or you can actually also go like, okay, I don't want any gravity at all. And then you need to kind of like figure another way how you make it fall. Or you just let it uh, react. As you can see, no gravity at all doesn't work. But you can also like go super, super, super light and stronger in gravity, which creates another kind of, uh, of form as well. Like more falling, but also more um, more bending and everything. And this is like a super nice way to do those things. So once you are done, um, or well, once you are happy with your effect, I'm gonna go for this one because I kind of like it. And basically, go here to your subdivision, apply it, apply the cloth, and it's in here. And now you can choose either. Um, um, quad measure on it or whatever you want and you can just use it like any other normal mesh I can mirror this and giving this maybe a bit more metallic so it's some darker now you can add here some kind of gold bands or whatever you want or you can of course have a full sleeve as well you can go into here you can also sculpt out up here the mesh some if you don't want to have it like super creasing here but actually more puffy and there you go also if you want to have like some kind of uh, of gap in here just basically do it on the low poly mesh um, by clicking two different points oh well two different points in the same line would be good and then you can basically bevel it and now what is important, create one vertical in between. So you can choose that one from up here to down here, whoops, with control. And then you can just delete that one and you have something like this. And then you can simulate it again. It will actually like open to both sides more, basically like as if you have a, a slit your stuff and of course like making this more closed as well oops without this thing would be good and then you can basically uh, adjust it how big you want it uh, how strong you want it and you can do a lot with just playing around with this kind of points if you don't want it like super pointy you can also just move it up so it looks like a base similar cut. All right, that's it. Um, I hope this was helpful because I love doing those sleeves and I'm not the biggest fan of going for everything into Marvelous Designer because I think um, Blender is giving us some great tools for this. And when you have like this now, um, this is like 9, 9K, so it's not that bad, but if we want to remesh it to, I don't know, 2,000 or, whoops, no, 2,000 or 3,000. And we are gonna do this. I don't have, oops. 
Uh, oh, damn it. This is already. Let me remove the ma uh, mirror first. Gonna hit one time. And let me do it like this. There we go. And now basically you have here some sharp edges, so just shade smooth it and there you go. Now you have 4K and you can, without any trouble, bake the um, high poly on the low poly. Anyway, that's it. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, leave a follow and a like if it was. And if you have some more ideas for cool tutorials, just hit me up. I'm always, always curious to help you guys more. Otherwise, check out um, the Discord, the YouTube channel, the coffee, whatever. Uh, if you want to have uh, direct lessons, I offer them as well. Otherwise, thank you for watching and enjoy making your sleeves. Bye bye.